Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video, I'm Get Good Guy, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare has just released, and of course, many many people are looking to optimise their setup as best they can, as fast as they can. So I'm here to give you my console settings guide to help you out as early as possible. For clarification, or qualification I guess, uh, I've been playing competitive multiplayer shooters for about 15 years or so, and I've built a channel playing them, so I know at least a bit, and I've produced such guides for Battlefield, Borderlands, Apex Legends, etc etc. I'm giving you this Modern Warfare one now on day one and maybe I'll do an update video once we know a bit more as this is very early, but these are my initial tips for console settings and some of them will also apply to PC. Now let's get into this. Alright, so I'm going to try and go through this, the important parts, in as much detail as I can whilst also striking a balance with not making this too long. And if I sound a little odd in any of this, it's because this game came out at midnight in the UK, my girlfriend's in bed and I'm trying not to wake her up, so <laughs> let's try and get this done. We're starting off in the controller section with button layout preset. Default is what's going to work as the standard thing from most FPS games if you're used to them, but if you've played around with things in the past, then you may want to go over some of these. I'm going to go over the ones that I think are of relevance here. Um, if you want something very specific, then you will no doubt find it in here. But the ones that are going to be commonly used are default, tactical, which is basically where your right stick becomes your, your prone, your slide and everything like that, which is what I will use. So I will melee with B and I will drop shot and such like with the right stick. If you enjoy sliding, drop shotting, all that, then you probably want to use tactical unless you're using a scuff controller or something and you want to press B on the back. Uh, then also I will say that bumper jumper is relevant. Again, if you're not using a scuff or something and you want to jump without pressing A, you can do it using the left bumper so you can jump while still using the stick so you can still aim very important or jumping with the left bumper and then using your crouch on the right stick so tactical bumper and some other stuff down here again if you want something very specific you'll find it down here but those are the ones that I think are most important and are going to be the most commonly used Stick layout preset. Most people will leave this on default. Almost no one will want to move this or change this, but again, it does tell you here what they do if you do want to change it. I'm not going to go into detail because it's almost irrelevant for most players. Uh, invert vertical look, disabled for most people is what you want. If you prefer to press up and look down, uh, oh, it's got two modes there. If you prefer to press up to look down or press down to look up, that kind of thing, as if you are on a plane, then you want it unenabled. Or if you only want that while you're in an airplane, then airplanes only. If you want the one that most people use, the default setting on most FPS games, leave it disabled where if you press up, it will look up. If you press down, it will look down. Horizontal stick sensitivity. I will be turning this up to something. Can't remember what I used in the beta, maybe six or seven. Uh, but yeah, I'll be having this higher than the default. Uh, play around with it, see what works for you. If you are aiming, in fact you could try this in game with anything, um, either enemy players or just aiming at things on the map. Uh, if you try to aim at something and you over aim, you go past it, then you want to have it lower. If you try to aim at something and you're struggling to get there or you fall short, you want to have it higher. Play around, see what works for you. Give yourself time to get used to something. Don't keep changing it all over the place. Find something that works and then over time you'll become more comfortable with it or you could work on having it lower for more precision or higher for faster reactions. All right. Aim sensitivity multiplayer low zoom. To explain this, this is on low zoom when you actually zoom in, when you have a low zoom scope or sight, putting this up will increase the sensitivity specifically with those sights. And the same thing with the high zoom below it or move it lower to make it move slower. Another one where you're gonna have to play around with it. If you want to have, let's say, really high sensitivity on your stick, but you're having issue with specifically low zoom or high zoom, so you wanna use a high zoom sniper rifle, then what you could do is have it really high, but then lower this until you find a nice level. Um, I'm gonna play around with it, see what I like at another point but at least now you know how it works. In response curve type, I think a lot of people will struggle with this. I've seen this explained as um, aim acceleration or as something that's not aim acceleration but is somewhat linked to it where your inner movements, so if it's ranked from naught to 100 with naught being no movement and 100 being the most movement, where you're just whacking your stick all the way to the edge, it's having it on standard is where the middle section is less important, it doesn't move as much, but the lower end and higher end is more sensitive. So if you play on a really low sensitivity, but then you want to have a high rate uh, when you actually do try and move quickly, you probably want it on standard. Me, I'm gonna have it on linear. 
this is basically where as much as I press it is as much as it will move. So there will be no speeding up, slowing down, no acceleration over time, just having it move as much as I want it to move. Most people will be used to standard because I think most games use that. And I, the dynamic one, honestly, I couldn't find enough information on it. So my rule is gonna be, if you feel uncomfortable with what you start off using, play with the other two. This one, I really don't understand, so I'm not gonna pretend. This one is gonna be the one where it moves as much as you move it, which is going to work for some of you out there. I'm sorry if that's a little unclear, but it's a little confusing. Hopefully that's helpful for you. Controller vibration. I'm having this enabled and I know some people will be screaming about that. Listen to me. If you want to play your utmost ability and have no distractions and nothing altering your movement on the controller, use disabled, okay? Get used to using uh, no vibration. No, no vibration, no vibration, because it will be better for you. You won't be fighting against any vibration when you're trying to aim. But I have it unenabled because I've tried no vibration before and I just can't get used to it. I need to have that vibration to let me know I'm being shot, that extra thing. It feels so weird for me if I don't have it on. So if you're like me, have it enabled. But if you can get used to it being disabled, then absolutely do it if you're just focused on efficiency and performing well. I'm going to have it on. Aim assist. Right. In the beta, I think this was on precision for, for the default setting. I don't know why, but I think that's what it was on. Um, and I found the aiming really weird. So, standard is what I'm going to use to start with. I'm just going to read them off over there basically, but give you a bit more detail. If you don't want any aim assist at all, which is where there's no slowdown when you aim near people or on people, it's all just manual analog aiming, then cool, disabled. What you've been used to in prior Call of Duties is going to be standard, where it's just the normal thing. Precision is strong aim slowdown that only kicks in when aiming closer to target best for accurate players. Now, as someone that is a reasonably accurate player, um, for some reason this just didn't work for me in the beta. I didn't like it. Um, I don't know whether I'm just not used to it, but it felt I felt like my aim got worse, oddly. So I put it back to standard. Uh, and then focusing, strong aim slowdown that also kicks in when narrowly missing target, best for players new to analog aiming. Probably go for that if you're not too good, basically. If you're new or just a low ability, it might help you to get your aim on point. But be aware that some uh, some people will find that that makes it harder to get onto the target because it's slowing down when you're near it and maybe you're finding like it's fighting against you getting to the target. It's going to come down to how you feel using it. So be aware of that. Precision, if your standard aim just feels a little bit wobbly, feel you can, you can do better with precision. But most people go standard. Okay. Weapon mounting. So this is when you can go up to certain surfaces and look around them or over them and reduce your recoil. Um, this is about how it's going to actually kick in. So the standard is gonna be you hit ADS and then melee and you'll be in that stance and you'll be able to then mount your weapon. This can be one you have to play. Maybe that will feel really natural for you when you're playing. So cool, go for it. Uh, I'm gonna to have to go and find out what works for me again so I've forgotten. But you can change it if not. You could do it to double tap ADS. To me, that sounds like it's gonna be a bit weird. It's gonna get in the way sometimes when you go to aim at something, change your mind, wanna aim again, it's gonna mount. Uh, but it's gonna be up to you or just have it sort of auto, or, or auto rather, um, lock on to mounting if you're near it by just hitting ADS or if you don't want any mounting at all you could disable it go and try it out it's going to be what's for you I'm going to stick with this one for now if it feels odd I'll change it the more important one for me I reckon is going to be this how you exit out of mounting the standard that it's on enabled is where you can actually move out of it you can press your stick and move out of being mounted if you don't want that you could go disabled where letting go of ADS will bring you out into the mounting bring you out of the mounting, sorry. It's been a long day. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be up to you what you wanna use. As I've said a million times, I will continue to say, go and play around with it. I'm gonna go with this because I feel like I wanna be able to quickly move out of it if I start to get shot without having to let go of ADS and then move. But if that causes you problems, you know what to do. Aim down sight behavior. Most people are gonna use hold, that's the default. That's where you will press the um, trigger and then you will be in aiming down sight. You let go to come out of it. If you don't want that, if you want to just press it and let go to be in it, and then press it again and let go to come out of it, then you use toggle. Most people are going to use hold. Equipment behavior, very much the same thing I just said with aiming down sight. But if you want to hold for stuff, then cool, like cooking a grenade. If you don't want to do that, then you're going to use toggle where you press it once, press it again, etc. Use reload behavior. Tap to reload is going to be where the standard thing for most people from most FPS games. I'm going to keep going back to that because I think it's very important to let people know what they might already be used to. But tapping will reload it for you. If you don't want to use that, you can tap to use, hold to reload. So you might 
If you've got something to use by pressing X or whatever you use for your reload button, you want to tap that and then you don't want to get that confused when you want to reload. Maybe you can get used to holding for reloading. I, I don't I don't want that. I'm going to stick with just tapping because it's what I'm used to. It's what most of you will like to do. But there's also contextual tap where tap to reload or to use with priority on use when possible, holding the button always reloads. That's like a mixture. So if you are near something that requires an action of pressing your reload button, um, just pressing it will override the reload, it will ignore that, and will use whatever's in front of you, if you want. Whereas if you're not near something and you tap it, it will reload your weapon. But holding the button down always reloads your weapon. I I'm not going to get that. Um, I it's Well, I might do. We'll play around. Um, I might get used to that, but this has worked for me for many years. I'm going to stick with the normal one. But keep in mind, you do have options if you want to go for something else. That one is going to be a great one if you can get used to it, actually. I might keep that in mind. It gives you more options. Anyway, a depleted ammo weapon switch. Very basic. Um, on the enabled setting, which is the default, when you run out of ammo with one weapon, it will switch to your other one. If you don't want that happening, disable it and you can manually change. I don't see any downside to having it on enabled personally um, that I can think of. It just means that you'll switch to another weapon when you're out of um, possible ammo to use. So I'm going to go with that, but it's up to you. Movement, slide behavior. I'm going to play around with this one as well. There's, there's a lot of finding your personal preference, but holding will mean you will slide, tapping will mean you will slide depending on what you have it on. I slide a lot. I think it's very important. I think it's very, very underutilized in Call of Duty, in Destiny, in Battlefield, and whatever it may be. Find what works for you. Vehicle camera recenter if you have this disabled, it will never recenter for you. If you have it enabled, it will recenter after a short period of time of um, of no movement. Personal preference, again, a lot of this will be. Moving on at the top tab to general. Brightness, uh, up to you. Uh, safe area, again, up to you. Just make sure you're within the boundaries of the screen. Uh, film green, I'm going to put this on zero. I want as little extra effects on my game as possible. I don't want anything chugging the frame rate. I don't want anything getting in the way of my visibility. I turn off everything. It's going to be up to you. If you want the game to look a certain way, then cool, but mine's going to be on zero. Tool tips, uh, it's just showing you prompts in game of things that you might want to know, what to press, what to do. I'm going to have that on for now, just while it's fresh and new, but I will eventually turn it off. Uh, some people leave it on forever, but if you don't want any of that popping up, have it disabled. Subtitles, I don't need them if you want them on put them on, very basic. Language, your language. I hope I don't need to explain that to you. I'm not going to go into colorblind stuff because I am not colorblind. There is no point in me giving you advice on it. I'm sure you can do better than this, or better than me rather with this if you are colorblind. Find what works for yourself. Uh, motion blur, off. Weapon motion blur, off. Uh, again, same thing as above. I don't want any extra effects. Uh, if you just want the game to be crisp and clear for your play, then have it, uh, sorry, have it disabled. If you like effects, if you want a cinematic kind of experience, how the game was designed to look, have them enabled. Not for me, I just want to shoot people and have the game look very crisp and clear, especially for my videos. Um, also, if uh, for me personally, I find that motion blur sometimes gives me motion sickness uh, and I don't want that. So if you end up playing the game and you feel like you're getting sick playing it, try turning off the motion blur on these. It may help you out. And also, when you're spinning around, I do a lot of jumping and spinning and, and trying to, you know, reacting quickly to people, hopefully. I don't want it to look blurred. I want it to look crisp and clear, so I keep them disabled. Whew, there's a lot, isn't there? Text chat. Uh, oh, this is all just the chat stuff. It's not of huge importance, in all honesty. If you don't want to see anything that no one's writing or you don't want to be able to write, then have it disabled. If you don't want to see any profanity or you've got kids and you don't want them to see any swearing, etc., Disable that. Uh, gore. I want it on. I want the gore. I want dismemberment. I want blood and guts and heads flying. <laughs> if you don't want that, disabled. Again, if you've got kids, you don't want to see that. Why are they playing this game? But regardless, you can disable it there. I want the gore on. Don't need the credits. Up at the top, we're going to the audio. Audio mix. This is, again, going to be down to yourself. Um... Play around, see what works for you. If you've got a home theatre system at home, then cool, go for it. If you've got a special setup of, of speakers at home, there'll be something that works for you. If you're an audiophile, you'll know what you're doing picking one of these. Me, I'm going to use a headset, so it's not going to be um, of as much importance. I just want to be able to rather hear people around me. So I'll play around with it as we go, but I assume lots of these will be fine. That's going to be up to you to find what you want. Master volume, just overall game volume. 
Music volume, I'm having this down on zero. Um, if you're just playing fun, I'd keep it on because it helps the experience. It helps uh, helps you play the game the way it was designed to be experienced. But I make YouTube videos and I don't want the music in that to overlay with my own music. If you are going to be doing streaming or videos, if you yourself have a channel or want to make a channel, maybe turn it off so you don't run into music issues at a later date with the meshing. Dialogue volume, I'm not gonna lie. The, the guy um, when I was playing in Ground War in the beta was really annoying. <laughs> He wouldn't stop shouting, so I'm turning that down. I want to be able to hear the callouts, but I don't want to hear them constantly and be really irritating. So that's something for you, again, to work out. But a little tip, if you find him annoying in the beta, or you've been playing and you find his callouts annoying, turn them down or off. Effects, duh, I don't need to explain this. In-game effects, if you find them too loud, turn them down. Juggernaut, there's Juggernaut in the game, a kill streak. If you want that special music when you get it, then have it enabled. If you don't, then have it disabled. I'm gonna have it disabled, again, purely because of my own music when I make videos. If you're not bothered about that, then maybe you want it on to get all hyped and such like. The hitmark sound, if you want the current hitmark sound that Modern Warfare has, then cool. If you want the classic one, then go back to that for that nostalgic feel. If you don't want any, then have them off. Um, I don't understand why you'd do that. And I think having them on is very important for that extra feedback. Th these games, feedback is key. Visual, audio feedback, all the information you can get that is reliable and viable, you should look for. I'm going to go with this one. Uh, it, it was all right for me in the beta. These are just about the voice chat. Um, none of this is going to be of huge importance. You can play around with it. It's just volume. I don't need to explain volume. Um, this, though, is about the threshold at which your microphone picks up your voice. For most people, the default is going to be fine, um, but if you have a microphone or a headset that doesn't seem to turn on, doesn't seem to pick up your voice at, at lower volumes when you're speaking, then you need to alter this, and vice versa, if it's too much, turn it down, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is just what it does when you mute people and such. On to our final bit, crossplay if you want to play against people on other platform, platforms, platforms and have it enabled. If you don't, disable it. So if you want to play with people on PlayStation, if you're on PC, if you want to play people on PC, if you're on Xbox, all that kind of stuff, enabled. If not, down there. If you don't want to risk playing against mouse and keyboard, if you've got a controller, you might do that. Uh, not much, much for me to say here. And these, keep these hidden if you're going to be doing streams or if you're going to be making videos. You don't want people knowing your location. You don't want people knowing your IP address or that kind of stuff. Um, if you're not bothered, you might turn them on, but I, I just can't see why you would. There may be a reason. You can let me know in the comments if so. But yeah, but I think we're done. I'm sorry if we ended up super monotone, super quiet, but it, it's really late and I'm trying to do this as best I can. I'm very tired. I'm looking forward to getting this out and going to bed. So I hope this was helpful for you. Leave your tips if I've missed any in the comments below. Um, hit the like button if this was useful. Subscribe and turn on notifications for more. I'm going to be doing a lot of Call of Duty moving forwards, a lot of stuff on how to get better, as well as just fun stuff and skits and all kinds of content, along with my Battlefield stuff and whatever else I end up making. So if you want to get better at the game, if you want to see some fun stuff, stick around. Here is the Board of Awesome for the epic people who support the channel on Patreon. They're all absolute heroes. I love them more deeply and, of course, often. And with that all said, I am Get Good Guy, and I will see you next time. Laters. Spec Ops is making its way back with Modern Warfare, that being a cooperative mode doing various missions or challenges and such like. But a specific part of it, known as Survival Mode, will be a PlayStation exclusive until October 2020, which basically means the game's entire lifespan, because around then a new Call of Duty will likely release anyway.